one of the great things about Sydney is that we're so fortunate that there's so many places we can catch blue swimmer crab and they're delicious. And today I'm going to show you how we catch blue swimmer crab. First, this is how you buy your net. So I'm going to take, pull it out. Okay, first thing you do is get rid of the tags. They're not very expensive, they're usually about <coughs> five or six dollars each. We get rid of the tag and we untie the rope here. This is the rope which holds those things out. This is what a crab look, which is how it looked like. Got a main string in the middle where you keep your bait. And the first thing I like to do is to make sure this string here is nice and tight. Some people like to tie the bait directly into the middle string. Uh, I rather lot prefer to use a bait cage, which means that you use quite soft bait like pilchard and uh, you won't lose all your bait to things like leather jackets and small fish, you know, small pictures which cleans, cleans your bait up. So I'll make that nice and tight. So that, there we have our centre line, nice and tight, right in the middle. Okay, take a look at these in. We don't want too many loose ends because what they do is they'll always tangle you up. That's nice and tight. Okay, so basically this is a witch's hat. It has a metal loop in the bottom, your mesh, your buoy, and then this attached to your buoy uh, float which comes to the surface of the water. Okay, now what, what I normally use is one of these. Alright, they're uh, just a uh, plastic netting. Not, not expensive, but two or three dollars each. And they work a dream. So, what you normally do is you open it up, put your bait in there. And you see, here they're taking a couple of cable ties. And we cable tie those to the rope in the middle. Make sure they're nice and tight in the middle and two will be more than sufficient. Make sure they're nice and tight. And again, we cut off all the loose ends. Don't want any loose ends. And there we have it. We just have ready to go. And what we normally do, open up, put a few pilchard in there, or uh, old fish frame, or yellow towel and we drop that over the side into our location and that floats along to the crab sword um, climb and pop trying to get to the bait and get tangled up in this fish now the other thing i must note is that most of these comes with a length of cord and uh, i like to add a little bit of extra cord to it so that's one two three four five six roughly about seven meters at which it's probably not enough for most locations, so I usually like to add a little bit more length. Alright, so we'll just attach an additional line to it. So we have roughly about 7 metres, 7 metres, 8, 9, 10, 11. About 11 metres is enough. I like to attach to a nice flat bit of foam. Make sure you have the correct identification that you require for the Department of Fishery, which is the main and usually uh, address correctly on your board. So the matter is winding that up. Halfway, one opposite direction so your line don't get twisted. Turn it around again, one the other direction, and that way your line won't get twisted. And then if you turn it around again, one opposite direction, you won't get any twist in your line. So that's all ready to go and make it nice and neat. Just a simple shopping bag, pop that in the shopping bag. One single tie there, which is ready to go and won't get tangled. So let's go and get some blue swimmer crab now. 